Hi, my name is Britta, and I recently started an online petition to change Canada's electoral system to one which is called Open List Proportional Representation. The purpose of this video is to illustrate the differences between our current system and the proposed system. Our current system is called First Past the Post. In this system, each party is allowed to run one candidate per riding. On election day, voters select one candidate to represent themselves in Parliament, and the candidate with the most votes in that riding wins. Then, nationally, the party with the most writings forms government. And there are a multitude of problems with this system. As we saw in the last election, it's possible for a party to form a majority government while having only a minority of the seats. And in the 2008 election, we saw that the Green Party won 7% of the national vote and did not win any seats. So it's possible to have a significant percentage of the popular vote and not win any seats. Uh, the system that we are proposing is called Open List Proportional Representation. It is in place in 15 countries, including Denmark and the Netherlands, and this is a form of what is called proportional representation. Uh, this is a system in which the percentage of the seats held by a party in Parliament is proportional to the percentage of the popular vote won by the party. So if a party wins 40% of the popular vote, then they will win 40% of the seats in Parliament. So let's take a look at some sample ballots. So here we have a typical sample ballot from our current system, first past the post. And you'll see that every party which has chosen to run in this writing has selected one candidate to represent them in this writing. And so on election day, voters get to choose one party and thus one candidate. And the candidate with the most votes wins that writing. And it's important to note that since only one party can win this writing, it means that if you did not vote for the winning party, then your vote does not affect the outcome of the election. So even if the party that you voted for got 40% of the popular vote, it means that you did not represent, you are not represented in Parliament. And then over here, we have a sample ballot from Open List Proportional Representation. In this system, the ridings will be resized to have more than one candidate running per riding. So in this example, we have five seats available for this riding, and thus each party was told they could run five candidates. So the Conservatives are running five candidates, the NDP are running five, Pirate Party has only chosen to run one, and the Green Party has chosen to only run three candidates. On election day, voters will choose not only they get to vote once, and they will choose not only the party that they wish to represent them, but which specific candidate within that party. Then, uh, the seats are divided as follows. Um, if the Conservative Party wins 40% of the vote within that riding, then they will win 40% of the five seats available, which means they will win two seats. And those two seats are given to whichever two Conservative candidates won the most vote. And so, as another example, if the Pirate Party won 20% of the vote in that writing, then they will win one seat, and there is only one candidate running for the Pirate Party, so that will be the candidate to win that seat. So there are many benefits to making the switch to open list proportional representation. Among the most important include an end to vote splitting, more equitable election results, a party will not have more power than they have earned, uh, more viable choices for the voters, the way that power is distributed also means increased government accountability, and it's the end of wasted votes. So I hope I've convinced you that open list proportional representation is vastly superior to our current system, and thank you.